So, it's 2020 now. The end of the year is usually a time for reflection, looking back on what happened last year and what was learned from it. This year is a little different though, because it's a brand new decade. People are going around, sharing pictures, reminiscing, all that jazz. But, what are we doing here? Well, I'm here to take a nice long nostalgia bath and bring you guys along for the ride. It's only weird if you make it weird. If you ended up playing a lot of video games in the last decade, there's a good chance that at least some of it was on one of these. Looking back, the Nintendo 3DS was my biggest mainstay platform for video games last decade. Some consoles rose up and died out before where we are today, others arrived way too late to the party, and I didn't own a decent computer until 2017. Plus, that's technically cheating. It's impressive that this little thing stuck with me for around 9 years and counting, so I'm going to take you guys back to 2011 and talk about what an amazing ride being a 3DS owner has been in the name of a new decade. Who knows, maybe you'll develop some of those warm, fuzzy, nostalgic feelings yourself along the way. Also, this isn't going to be every 3DS game I've played, just the ones that stick out in my mind the most. So our story begins in 2011, a time where the 3DS was brand new and it was also considered to be a disappointment. Yeah, when this thing launched it didn't bring any compelling games with it, the only two of note are Pilot Wings and I guess Rayman, but these hardly justified the purchase of a whole new system. Also, before release, people were freaking out about the 3D sliders, saying it'll make your kids blind and attach their spine from their muscles so it falls out their ass, I'm paraphrasing. But look Looking back, 2011 was one of the 3DS's biggest years for me. It was the year I first beat Ocarina of Time and Star Fox 64 thanks to their 3D remakes. Both incredible games, Ocarina especially made my jaw drop because of what a step up visually it was from the DS. All of the models were 3D and so was the world, I didn't use it much, but the depth slider actually worked and it looked super cool. This game in particular just blew my mind. I always thought it must have been how kids felt in the 90s when this game first came out. Mario 3D Land. Oh man, I'm gonna be saying 3D so many fucking times in this video. Anyways, this was like a smaller scale Mario Galaxy game, which was another amazing novelty. Mario Kart 7 will always be my favorite Mario Kart game. It's the only one I've 100% completed thanks to high acceleration carts being amazing at high speeds. It was a massive multiplayer mainstay, and I don't think a long car ride was completed without it being busted out. Now, all of these games are great, and I played them all to death, but the game I played the most this year was Pokemon Rumble Blast. Hear me out. So a lot of people probably forgot that this game exists, or never knew it existed in the first place, and those that do are not fans of it at all. A quick hop on Google showed that words like hardly worth your time and one of the worst Pokemon spinoffs ever were super easy to find. But for me, this game was endlessly rewarding. You're going around beating the hell out of toy Pokemon with your toy Pokemon and adding them to your collection to get stronger. And I wanted to collect as many Pokemon as possible. I love the concept of a Diablo-style Pokemon game, where catching them all was easy and really fun. So I went nuts on this game, and if I remember correctly, there is a thing after you beat the game called World Rank where you can spend an absurd amount of Poke Dollars to make every enemy in the game a lot stronger. And I ended up doing this nine times. I don't know how many ranks there are, and quite frankly, I don't really want to know, because that will probably reveal some horrible memory related to me being on the cusp of 100%ing Pokemon Rubble Blast instead of spending my time doing anything else. Oh well. Time you like wasting isn't time wasted, right? But other than those five games, 2011 was the year of the eShop Virtual Console. I came into the 3DS with the goal of turning it into a system I would never get bored with, and seeing that there were tons of Game Boy games going for $46 each and a bunch of other consoles later down the line, I ended up playing a lot of old games. So for the sake of time, here's a lightning round of all the games I remember playing. Now most of these are from 2011, but obviously some of them aren't because they were released much later later, but I'm just gonna put them all here anyways. Okay, so Kirby's Dream Land, Donkey Kong 94, Super Mario Land, Super Mario Land 2, Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge, Double Dragon, Metroid 2, Link's Awakening DX, Kirby's Adventure, Excite Bike, Urban Champion, Dragon Crystal, which if I can say is the worst game I've ever played, nothing about it ever made sense, never played this game, Metroid, Zelda 2, Punch-Out, Castlevania, Pokemon Yellow, Earthbound, Super Metroid, and Link to the Past. Needless to say, I was extremely dedicated to to building the ultimate virgin machine. Which brings us to 2012, a pretty quiet year save for one big exception. New Super Mario Bros 2 and Mario Tennis Open came out, both decently fun games. And uh, I think a dog shit in my mouth that year? I can't say for sure, but it sounds like it was pretty gross.
gross. But what came later was anything but gross. Animal Crossing has always been a problematic game for me. Every time a new one comes out, it ignites an unhealthy obsession with fishing and catching bugs for cash in me. The concept of making menial tasks this addictive should be illegal, and it's the only old 3DS game I'd still consider returning to today, as its younger brother is taking its sweet time in the oven. New Leaf is the kind of game that's always been hanging around, a friendly face to return to after being burned by something like Sticker Star. I still haven't done everything there is to do in this game, and I've been playing it for seven years. Time sure flies when you're hunting for whale sharks and golden beetles, huh? 2013 was another big boy year. Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D took my favorite 2D platformer and made the controls reasonable. Dark Moon was a decent game, but it sticks out in my mind today because of all the time my brother and I put into the scare scraper during long car trips. A Link Between Worlds was a ton of fun. Tying every item into the magic meter and the painting mechanic were absolutely genius. Definitely my favorite 2D Zelda. 2013 was also the year where I learned the true meaning of hard work. The day was July 29. 9th, 2013, two weeks before the release of Mario & Luigi Dream Team. After playing through Superstar Saga and Bowser's Inside Story, I knew I needed to get this game on release, but with no big holidays in sight, getting it for free seemed hopeless. So I sold my soul for the next 14 days to my parents out of desperation and was forced to carry out their bidding. Rake the leaves, clean out the closet, sweep the garage, hardcore shit. But I came out on top, and I've got the trophy to prove it. Oh yeah, and the game's really good. But I needed to finish it quickly because as I'm sure most of you remember, 2013 was a Pokemon year. Once again, the 3D models on a handheld blew my mind. It was crazy to think I was playing a game that looked better than the first game I ever played on a portable system. X and Y faded out pretty quickly for a lot of people, because looking back, the single player was really mediocre. But when it comes to multiplayer, this was Pokemon at its finest. The player search system is the best online UI on the 3DS. I can't tell you how many hours I spent meeting new people, trading for shinies, sending fletchlings up through Wonder Trade, and battling with unique team compositions. It had never been so easy to connect with other players to do all things Pokemon. Our only limitation was how bad the 3DS was as a communication device. If you hopped into a trade and wanted to ask for shinies only, you'd have to catch yourself a Caterpie, nickname it Shinies Please, and hope to god the guy you're talking to understands you. If you added someone to your friends list and wanted to talk to them, you'd have to constantly update your online status as a pseudo text messaging system. And if any of your other friends were online and looking at their friends list, they must have been really confused. Simply put, it was awesome, and the best part is the fun didn't end with X and Y. 2014 gave rise to the big one. See, I grew up with a GameCube as my first system, so I played a ton of Melee as a kid. I used to have dreams that one day I'd be able to play two of my favorite GameCube games on a handheld, and in the case of Smash Bros, my wish was granted. As for the other game... <clears throat> yeah. Anyways, funny story, my family went to Best Buy on launch day to pick up the game, but I guess they weren't ready to have it up on the shelf yet, because there were like a hundred copies of the game just shelved under the desk in that big support center every Best Buy has in the middle of the store. We had searched for about 15 minutes when we gave up and asked some guy for help, and he was like, oh yeah, our bad, and gave us the game. Smash worked way better on the 3DS than I thought it would and all my friends, both from X and Y and for real, were playing it. I remember countless games of tennis, shouty matches because Flare Blitz is impossible to dodge, and laughing every time someone got killed by the boat on Tortimer Island. I mean, sure, when the Wii U version came out, most people dropped it. But for a solid month, this was a go-to pastime, whether it's school or at home. The 3DS version didn't waste away though, because around 2016, my Wii U disc stopped working, and I wanted to get back into Smash after I learned that there was more to it than spamming forward Smash. So I used it to practice until I could get another copy for the Wii U. And then another one. Wii U discs are the worst, dude. Omega Ruby was awesome because it had the player search system, so it was X and Y all over again in my favorite Pokemon region. 2015 was a pretty crazy year because it started out with this thing getting released. My mom and dad surprised me on Valentine's Day with this bad boy, and it was amazing because that's not even a real holiday and it got treated like Christmas. And the first new game I used it for was the remake of Xenoblade Chronicles. There's not much I can say other than this game is really good, and if you haven't played it yet, buy it when 
when the Switch version comes out. The other heavy hitter this year was Majora's Mask 3D. I own the GameCube Zelda collection which had Majora's Mask on it, but some sections are borderline unplayable because of how dark the lighting in that version is. So this was the version I beat this game on, and uh, it certainly was a game. I didn't have a ton of fun with it, like at all, but I stuck with it because this is one of the most unique games I've ever played. I definitely understand why people call it their all-time favorite though. The atmosphere was bleak and oppressive, and while I didn't really like them, the masks in the 3D mechanic were super interesting. 2016 was another Pokemon year. The single player was a ton of fun, but they removed the player's search system, so I didn't touch it after beating it. And the rest of the year was spent with the amazing dev-created levels of Mario Maker 3D and the equally amazing Kirby Planet Robobot. 2017, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon came out, and uh, that's about it. Now I know, I, I get it, you expect a little more, but listen pal. My greatest fear is being trapped in a conversation about Mario Party the Top 100, so for my sake, I'm moving on. In 2018, I took a gamble on Dragon Quest XI when it came out, and I absolutely loved it. So like any sane person would do, I quickly bought up five other games to be enjoyed on the 3DS throughout the year. A remake of Luigi's Mansion came out, one of my favorite GameCube games, so I had to pick that up. The controls were a little weird in the beginning, but I got used to it and it worked well enough. So here we are in 2019, and all I have to show for last year are these. What can I say? New favorite franchise syndrome is still wearing down. And I think it's fitting that I close out my 3DS library with the last official game to be released for it. Man, Atlas always seems to be releasing a big title on his system once it's got one foot in the grave, don't they? Anyways, you probably noticed I didn't have a lot to say for those last few years. I'm not going to pretend the 3DS was my go-to system for the majority of the decade, but I'd be foolish to say it didn't stick around. I still have games to finish that'll take me well past 2020 to get to. I just think it's impressive that this little guy stuck with me for so long, and this new year gave me a good opportunity to talk about it, and an excuse to try a unique style of video while I'm working on other big boy projects. Hope it turned out okay. Happy 2020 everyone.